Good afternoon. You're listening to Clearing the Air on KFCF Fresno 88.1 FM. I'm your host, Dolores Weller from the Central Valley Air Quality Coalition, also known as CVAC. And this program, Clearing the Air, covers air pollution issues in the valley, in the San Joaquin Valley, and brings you interviews with individuals who are at the forefront of air pollution policy, advocacy, and research. Um, and our show airs every fourth Friday at 3 p.m. and is hosted by CVAC, uh, CVAC staffer, usually myself. And uh, I just realized that we've been doing, I've been hosting this show for over five and a half years now, which I had no idea it was so long. <laughs> um, but CVAC is basically a partnership of more than 70 member organizations throughout the Valley and state, uh, unified by their commitment uh, to create clean air for all Valley residents. And um, today we're talking about a timely topic, uh, pollution source here in our San Joaquin Valley um, that we are all very familiar with, and that is uh, the impact from dairies, specifically mega dairies, um, what the impact is on our air quality and also uh, greenhouse gases now that uh, climate change efforts are at the forefront of uh, a lot of policy that we're seeing here locally and and uh, globally. So on our show today we have Brent Newell who is the legal director for the Center on Race, Poverty and the Environment, also known as CRPE. And uh, they're a nonprofit organization, member organization of CVAC, um, that seeks to achieve environmental justice and healthy, sustainable communities throughout um, through collective action and the law. And so Brent brings a lot of experience uh, forcing California to adopt uh, regulations that reduce emissions from pesticide use, holding uh, factory dairy farms accountable. Um, and uh, I consider him a, a Clean Air Act expert. So thank you, Brent, for being on the show today. Thanks for asking me, Dolores. I'm, I'm very happy to be here. Great. So um, talking about dairies, we've, we've visited the, the, the subject before here on this show, but a lot has, has happened um, since, since we last, uh, last talked about it. But maybe let's just start out talking about um, paint a picture for us of what mega dairies are here in the San Joaquin Valley. Well, the best way to understand mega dairies is primarily what what they are not. The, these these things are not Old McDonald's Farm. Uh, they're not the milk production that the dairy industry would have you believe uh, by their commercials. You know, th these aren't happy cows grazing on beautiful rolling green pastures. Uh, mega dairies, also called you know factory farms, are highly industrialized uh, confinement systems where cows are are kept in what are called freestall barns, uh, large concrete uh, open sided barns where uh, the cows eat and then are taken to be milked three times per day. Um, you know the. The manure from these cows gets flushed off of that concrete surface and into these large liquefied manure storage lagoons. Um, and then that liquid manure is then placed on crops and the crops are then fed back to the cows in, in a sort of cycle. Um, contrast this to those happy cow dairies, pasture-based operations, which is the way that uh, you know, dairy products have traditionally been produced until, you know, just in the last several decades. Um, they're predominantly located in the San Joaquin Valley in very large concentrations uh, in Tulare and Kings County. There are extremely large dairies down in Kern County and up north near Merced. There are um, a very high concentration of smaller dairies. And when I, when I say small, I mean a thousand cows or less. Mm -hmm. And the, the largest dairies get to be about 15,000 total cows, which, which produces the equivalent waste of a, a city of several hundred thousand people. Right. And um, if uh, there are any diehard listeners of our show, last time we talked about this um, issue, we brought up um, an interesting um, 
project that was in the UK and they were trying to prevent uh, factory farms uh, from developing and so they took a lot of footage from what's going on here in the San Joaquin Valley and showing kind of what could happen um, and they were I think there was an ordinance in a particular county that was looking at maybe 1500 cows which would seem small compared to some of the the facilities that we have here in the valley would you agree Brent? Yeah, you know, 1,500 cow dairy may be large for, for Great Britain, but, uh, you know, for California and the San Joaquin Valley, it's it's nothing. Right. And so, so what about the dairy specifically is an air quality problem? Why, why are they such a big air quality problem? Dairies, surprisingly, are the leading source of smog, formerly called ozone uh, pollution and fine particle pollution. And, and I'll explain because it, it's, not, it's not obvious. Uh, the fresh waste from cows and cows' enteric emissions, enteric emissions refer to uh, burps and flatulence. Um, those emit what are called volatile organic compounds. The corn that is ground up and fed to dairy cows, it's called the corn silage, that is the largest source of these volatile organic compounds. And what happens when, when VOCs um, are emitted is they go into the air and they mix with the kind of pollution that comes from cars and trucks or factories. Uh, it's called oxides of nitrogen or NOx. And that those two pollutants, they, they mix in the summer heat in the valley, it's very conducive to the formation of ozone, and then that pollutes our air, and it makes the valley the second worst ozone polluted place in the entire country. Dairies are the leading source of volatile organic compounds. Mm -hmm. They're a huge part of that problem. Um, and then there's another pollutant that comes from dairies, ammonia, and there's so much manure being generated by these giant factory farm dairies it is very nitrogen rich and what happens when that manure is liquefied and stored in those lagoons is that the nitrogen volatizes as ammonia gas and about half of the nitrogen goes up into the air and during the winter time it reacts with that oxides of nitrogen those uh, pollution from cars and trucks and factories to form a compound called ammonium nitrate and that is the most prevalent form of fine particle pollution in the valley's air during the winter time. And the valley has the worst fine particle pollution in the country. Again, dairies are the leading source of ammonia and a big part of that problem. Right, and going back to the, the feed, um, can you explain a little bit more? Is it just actually sitting out there that's, that's contributing to, to the VOCs? How does that become a VOC problem? Yes, you know, silage is, is, is is sort of a, a flying under the radar in terms of the, the how it produces pollution and how much. The corn gets ground up and then covered in these plastic sheets and put in big piles. And you, if you drive by a dairy, you'll see this big white plastic pile. And underneath is, is the ground up corn and it's fermenting. There's bacteria eating the sugar in the corn, changing that corn so it's, it's more digestible for the cows. Well, the same process happens at a ethanol plant where corn, sugar, is turned into fuel, alcohol. Well, there's all this alcohol in that corn silage. And when they take that corn silage out, and they spread it in long rows in front of the cows in these big, long freestall barns. Then all that alcohol in the silage volatizes into the air very quickly. Mm -hmm. And there's so much of it, it really has a huge impact on ozone formation. And do you think this is only a, an issue for communities who live near dairies, or should this be, you know, a concern to anyone who lives in the San Joaquin Valley? It's it's a concern for both, because one of the alcohol compounds is is a t very toxic pollutant called methanol. So if you live near a dairy and you smell that sweet, sickly smell uh, from the silage, that's this alcohol you're smelling, and methanol again is a toxic. So. If you live nearby, you're being exposed to that air toxic. Mm -hmm. For everybody in the valley, there's so much of this 
these alcohol emissions come in from silage, that it mixes in the air and forms ozone that, that plagues the valley, that covers the valley, and harms our health every summer. Right, and you also mentioned the, the PM 2.5, our wintertime pollution and, and the implications. We, we know we've, we've heard of uh, the inversion layer that we experience in, in uh, the wintertime, and we're sort of trapped in here with um, a lot of uh, the, the pollutants, and, and ammonia nitrate would be one of those, right? Yes, uh, ammonium nitrate, again, is the most prevalent form. It, it's, it has the most mass of all the PM 2.5 in the valley so it's the biggest part of the pm 2.5 problem right and thinking about the the sort of pie of you know distribution of of where all of our air pollution comes from i was looking at the air district's report to the community and i think it's at the very back of this um booklet that they they share with the community and um, the annual pm 2.5 emissions i think the biggest chunk there is from farming operations and it's about uh, 22%. So dairies would likely fall under that category, correct? Yeah, from ammonia. Mm-hmm. And, and then, you know, dairies and other farming operations are large sources of the other chemical that forms ammonium nitrate, NOx, um, through trucks and irrigation engines and farm equipment and so on. And, and dairies use a lot of that equipment um, there on site. So, you know, it's more than just the ammonia. So, Right. Uh, dairies are, again, a huge part of the problem. Yeah, and just for kind of uh, perspective here, um, give a little perspective. The fireplaces and wood stoves, which we hear a lot more about, um, is only about 7% of the entire um, PM 2.5 annual emissions um, that they contribute. But we see a lot of money and, and uh, resources and attention given to, to that particular um, source, of, source of PM. Yeah, you know, fireplace producers don't have the political clout that the dairy industry does. Right, right, definitely. Well, let's talk about kind of the the shift because I think that the air quality battle when it comes to dairies has been happening for a very long time and you've been part of it from from the beginning. But now we're seeing um, a a trend towards um, tackling greenhouse gases. And so can you kind of help us differentiate the, the two and and how how dairies kind of play that the role most definitely uh, methane is the primary greenhouse gas emitted by dairies uh, and it is it comes from the same sources that I described emit the the smog forming and pm 2.5 forming pollution um, Methane comes from the cows themselves, those enteric emissions, the the burps and the flatulence. Um, And it also comes from the manure that's decomposing in those liquid manure storage lagoons. And this is not a trivial amount of methane. The state's entire methane uh, emissions are huge and dairies account for 45% of that methane pollution. Uh, About half of it comes from the liquid manure storage and about half of it comes from the enteric emissions. Methane is an extremely powerful greenhouse gas. Measured over a 20 year period, it is 84 times as powerful as carbon dioxide. Hmm. So it's what's known as a short-lived climate pollutant. And because of its high potency, it is receiving a lot of attention from regulators because as everyone knows in the valley, we're having heat waves, we're having drought, we're having all kinds of of, um, harms that are caused by climate change. And policymakers have recognized the need to reduce methane from dairies. Right, and so you said 45, of the state's entire methane, 45% uh, come from dairies. That's correct. And, and thinking about just methane sources in the San Joaquin Valley, mm-hmm. 87% of the, all of the methane emitted from the San Joaquin Valley comes from livestock, and the vast majority of that are dairy operations. Oil and gas 
only produces a very small fraction Mm -hmm. of the overall methane load. Definitely significant. I think I remember seeing some kind of methane hotspot map, and it was clearly centered somewhere around Tulare County, um, and it was uh, pretty shocking to see. If you're just joining us, you're listening to KFCF uh, Fresno 88.1 FM Free Speech Radio. I'm your host, Dolores Weller. Uh, Clearing the Air is the program you're listening to, and we're talking to Brent Newell for, from Center, Center on Race, Poverty, and the Environment. We're talking about dairy industry's impacts on uh, local air quality and greenhouse gas emissions. Um, so, so hearing kind of, you know, the impacts to to greenhouse gases and also to air quality help us kind of connect it to what what this is what the the dairies are doing to our health um and kind of give us a picture of that well they're affecting our health through uh these air emissions of volatile organic compounds and ammonia um ozone pollution exacerbates asthma exacerbates respiratory uh uh illnesses um it uh, has a huge social cost. Uh, PM 2.5 uh, is very similar in its impacts, but also leads to premature death. You know, increases in PM 2.5 levels are correlated directly to uh, emergency room visits and deaths from cardiovascular um, causes. So, you know, there are direct um, health consequences. And you know, economists have measured the health impacts of uh, air quality in the valley and analyzed how much money the public could save um, if air actually met uh, federal health standards. And the, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Dolores, but it was in the $3 billion a year range right. um, uh, in terms of measurable costs. Mm-hmm, definitely. So, you know, dairy being a major part of this problem is having a major impact on health including the economics of health. Um, And then when you add on how much greenhouse gases this industry contributes, 45% of the state's methane, uh, it's having an impact on our climate, which also affects our health. Right. And so, you know, I think a lot of people who who don't really understand, um, you know, the, the... the air quality impact or, or the politics behind this, just assume that the industries are being regulated and our health is being protected. What are some of the like the actual rules and regulations on the industry that exist and maybe some you know opportunities for, for um, you know further regulating the industry to protect our health? Well, until 2004, there were no air pollution controls. For dairies, they use their political power, clout, and influence both at the local level and at the state level to have exemptions and to have regulators ignore this huge problem. Uh, local air quality advocates uh, who are part of CVAC ended that exemption mm-hmm. and were uh, central in the effort to pass a law sponsored uh, by. Uh, former state senator Dean Flores to remove the exemption and impose uh, air pollution controls on these facilities. That that law was called Senate Bill 700. And for the very first time in California, uh, new and existing dairies had to deal with their air pollution. That was a huge victory. And it's led to uh, modest reductions in those air pollutants. Uh, more needs to be done, obviously. Mm-hmm. Uh, now there are efforts to reduce the methane emissions. And just like the air battle that happened over the last decade, the dairy industry is still fighting its regulation. You know, all other industries uh, are expected to reduce their air pollution, are expected to reduce their climate pollution. Yet the dairy industry still thinks that it can get a free ride. You know, why should the public have to pay all these costs, including um, buying cars that um, where you have to go and get your car smogged. Uh, the public has to comply with fireplace restrictions, um, increase costs from air pollution and, and climate. And the dairy industry continues to try to uh, weasel out of doing their fair share to clean the air. 
Right. And so tell us about, um, I know there's some timely legislation that um, could possibly um, impact the, the emissions from, from dairies. Can you share with us the, the Senate bill? Yes, there's a, a, a bill pending in the California legislature uh, um, authored by uh, State Senator Ricardo Lara, which would require uh, the reduction in these powerful short-lived climate pollutants. It's sometimes called the super pollutant bill. And among other things, it requires uh, the California Air Resources Board to reduce methane emissions by 40% from 2013 levels by the year 2030. And this would have a huge benefit in terms of reducing climate because as I mentioned, methane is so much more powerful than carbon dioxide. Mm -hmm. So a 40% cut in methane would make a major difference in our efforts to fight climate change. And so what's the status of the bill? I know that CVAC, um, we had about 30 people uh, just recently in the Capitol meeting with legislators and, and supporting the bill. Um, but can you share the, the latest on, on the bill? Well, the latest is that the dairy industry is, is still fighting uh, this very important legislation. They don't want to be required to reduce their methane. They're arguing that they should be able to do it voluntarily. And we've seen how much they've done voluntarily to improve air quality and reduce methane already. So nobody should be buying that, uh, what they're selling. So um, the bill is facing uh, some headwinds in the legislature. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, if you're interested in improving air quality in the valley, if you're interested in addressing climate, you can call your legislator and ask them to support this important piece of legislation because reducing methane from dairies is also going to have the co-benefit of reducing those air pollutants that are adversely affecting our health. We're also asking that the best form of milk production be recognized, which is pasture-based dairy operations, the way that it used to be done, the way that the dairy industry falsely portrays its production now, these happy cows. Happy cow dairies would go a long way in reducing methane emissions and cutting out those harmful volatile organic compound and ammonia emissions. Definitely. And so the, the bill SB 1383 uh, by Ricardo Lara, if you want to call your legislator and encourage them to, to uh, support the bill, uh, would definitely make a huge impact here in the, the San Joaquin Valley. Um, and so I know we've talked about some of the, the practices that, that can be done, you know, as far as air quality um, rules at the local air district here. Um, for you know developing the particulate matter plans for example are there some specific asks that you think advocates should be making or you know what the dairy industry could do more to to curb some of the air quality impacts well again you know i can't emphasize this enough but but grass mm -hmm. is the solution <laughs> producing dairy products uh, from cows that are on pasture um, avoids the liquefaction of manure. A cow patty gets dropped on pasture and does not emit methane the way liquefied manure does. So already you're slashing methane. When a cow is out on pasture, it's not eating corn silage. So you're slashing volatile organic compounds from corn silage. You also have fewer cows per acre on pasture. So re you're reducing those enteric emissions. Mm -hmm. So an important ask to regulators at the Air Resources Board as it uh, addresses this issue. An important ask to your legislators is it's time for the dairy industry to reduce their climate pollution. And there are ways to have meat and milk uh, without affecting our climate and without uh, affecting our health. And the other thing that everybody can do, every listener can do this, you don't have to buy the kind of milk that's produced at these factory farm mega dairies. You go to the store, look for pasture-based dairy products. Mm -hmm. Look for pasture-based cheese and yogurt and ice cream and milk. It's out there. You can buy that. And your decision as a consumer to support a positive practice that benefits community, that doesn't harm 
our neighbors. That's what you can do to make things better. Definitely. All great advice. And um, listeners should also be aware that the Air District is, is beginning to work on their next uh, PM 2.5 plan, which will address the wintertime pollution. And, I mean, it's been a frustrate, frustrating um, process for me, um, given that they feel they've done everything, that they've researched all of the uh, dairy rules in the nation, and they feel they have the strong and most stringent rules in the nation. What do you what do you say to that? As you know, there's a pending planning process. Well, it, it's true that that California has the most stringent air pollution controls on dairies. It's because we're the only state to do it. The federal government hasn't done it. California and local valley leaders and advocates made that happen. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that they're what we need them to be protective. And so there's room to improve. There's room to ask for more and to achieve better because our air is still polluted. So, you know, this rhetoric that you hear from the air district that there's no stone left unturned, there's no further actions that they can take, that's totally incorrect. The Air District can, uh, can ban the use of silage at dairies. The Air District can impose much more stringent pollution controls. The only thing that's true is how much political power dairies wield at the Air District. The Air District is controlled by county supervisors. There's eight of them, and they control a majority voting block at the Air District. And you can bet that those dairymen influence county politics in ways that most of us have no idea how much influence they have. Right. So well, so super, go thank, ahead. Thank you. No, then we're running out of time, but yes, very true. And in, in so many issues that we deal with at the Air District, um, but do not uh, give up hope. You know, continue um, advocating and and um, reaching out to your legislator and and being a part of the process. Um, we have run out of time, but you've been listening to Clearing the Air on KFCF Fresno 88.1 FM. Thank you, Brent Newell from CRPE, for joining us to talk about mega dairies and air pollution. And uh, you, you can tune in to our show next month, the third Friday of the month. Uh, until then, fourth Friday of the month. Thank you. Uh, have, a, have a great weekend, and, and uh, thank you for listening. Got for that piano player.